So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we have another episode of the off-season rebuild series, and today it's going to be the Charlotte Hornets. At the time I am recording this, the Charlotte Hornets are 19 and 59. The playoff picture has been in the rearview mirror for quite some time, and this is a young team, but this is a rebuilding team. Steve Clifford just stepped down. They are going to find themselves a new head coach. This is a team led by Lamelo Ball, who they took third overall back in the 2020 draft. A very good, very transcendent player, but ultimately has a lot of injury problems. And today, our goal is to rebuild this team, hopefully build them back up. Maybe some of those levels though they had with Cardiac Kemba. Obviously, that team never got a championship, really anything close to that. But we want to go ahead of that, get this team to some sort of contender in three off seasons. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. I've been really enjoying the off-season rebuilds that we've been doing a few times a week. If you guys have been as well, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section. Of course, with any other video ideas. But yeah, man, these Charlotte Hornets are uh, they're trending in a very interesting direction right now. Because, you know, Brandon Miller, LaMelo Ball, Mark Williams, a lot of nice young pieces there. But there's really not an identity with this team right now. And, you know, they're going to have another high draft pick this year. A lot of young talent. They're going to make a big decision on Miles Bridges, which, of course, we're about to do right now. But a lot of work. Let's get into it. Our first order of business of today's offseason rebuild is going to be to talk about this Hornets roster. They had a relatively active deadline. They shipped off P.J. Washington to the Dallas Mavericks, as I just touched on a little bit ago in the intro. Steve Clifford stepped down, and he's moving to a front office role. And it's really kind of make or break for a lot of the guys on this team. So we'll start out at the point guard spot. Best player on this team, far and ahead, is LaMelo Ball. As I mentioned, third overall pick in the 2020 draft. It just really makes me wonder what the Golden State Warriors would look like right now if they didn't take James Wiseman second. But LaMelo Ball is very good. He's only 22, obviously on that long-term contract. Really, the only concern with him is injuries. And as unfortunate as it is to say, it, it seems like it's becoming more of a common occurrence with him and unfortunately Lonzo as well. So, man, I love watching the Ball brothers play basketball. I really hope they can both stay healthy for the rest of their careers. But he's only 22. That injury problem is not great to have at that age. We'll see, though. Probably not going anywhere today. We don't play with injuries on. Uh, Vasily Micic is just 30. I mean, I know he's only like a second or third year player, whatever the hell he is. He's second year or what? First. Okay, my bad. Um, but again, it's just it's probably not any term of star player or anything like that. Good role piece, though. Uh, Nick Smith Jr. is here. He was the 27th overall pick in the 2023 draft. I would like to see how much we can develop him. I'd like him to be a significant contributor to this team at some point in time. But 73 overall is not terrible after a rookie season. Uh, shooting guard spot. Trey Mann came over in a deal with the Oklahoma City Thunder. That was the Gordon Hayward trade. Um, he's not a bad player at all. Again, solid contributor off the bench. I just don't think there's really a world, or at least one in this video, that he's a starter on any sort of team that we're trying to build here. But again, good role piece. Uh, Cody Martin is here. I see Martin is just, uh, the Celtics fan in me is like, oof, Caleb Martin giving me v Vietnam flashbacks still. You got Seth Curry here. He's a good shooter. It's, of course, cool to see him play with Charlotte after his dad did. Small forward spot, Brandon Miller, who many people, and I'm not going to lie to you, myself included, I thought Scoot Henderson was the guy. I thought, you know what? When you're as bad as the Hornets are, it doesn't matter about the fit. You'll figure it out. Play Scoot and Lamella next to each other. Who the hell cares? I was very wrong, like many other people, and I will take that one straight in the chin, whatever you want to call it. Brandon Miller is very, very good. Probably the second best rookie this year so far. Unfortunately, there's a generational talent ahead of him in Victor Wembanyama, but he's definitely going to be a building block for us here today. Davis Bertans, no thank you. You got Bryce McGowan's here, who's only 21. Maybe that overall ticks up a few. He can maybe be a relatively solid contributor to this team. Uh, Miles Bridges, it's going to be a big decision both in this game and real life. You know, he ended up signing his qualifying offer to stay with the Hornets after a year of suspension or whatever. He just wasn't in the league, whatever it was. Um, and for me, he's only 26. He's a very good player. He's not a great human being, but he's a solid contributor. So... Um, I'm going to see how much money he's asking for, and we'll kind of go from there. Grant Williams came over from the Dallas Mavericks. That was part of the P.J. Washington trade at the deadline. Um, I don't necessarily hate the idea of having him contribute in some way for this entire video. I like Grant Williams, but um, he is making a decent chunk of change, so if the numbers aren't there, we'll probably move on. And then J.T. Thor here, probably not going to contribute a ton, but if he develops, maybe we'll see. Center spot, I'm big on Mark Williams. I want to see him develop into my... Starting star, everyday center, whatever you want to call it. But an 82 overall at only 22 is, of course, very nice to see. Nick Richards can definitely be a contributor. And then Poku ended up signing with the Hornets for the rest of the season. I have no idea what we're going to do with him today. But we will find out. All right, man. Let's get into offseason number one. Um, of course, we do have to find ourselves a new head coach. I don't think the game's going to be updated. But Steve Clifford is no longer the head coach of this team. Uh, we are currently projecting the fourth overall pick. I'll confirm what the protections are on it. But I'm almost positive we're going to have our first round pick this year. And it's a number two. Number two overall. That is definitely a 
significant draft pick. It is very much going to give us many options to choose from, and I will definitely take that. Um, so Steve Clifford's gone in real life. I think he's a relatively decent coach. I just, I mean, how much can one guy take from one organization? So he stepped down where you have to fire him today, but we are on the lookout for a new head coach. You know what? I think this could be an Underwood video. I've had some pretty good success with Jacob Underwood when we've been like rebuilding really bad teams. I know Popovich and Stauffer are both here, but you know what? We're going to go after Jacob Underwood today. We're going to give him about $8 million annually, and he's going to take over a new head coach of the Charlotte Hornets. So we're up to the draft now. The second overall pick is fantastic. I will 100% take that. Uh, we also have number 12 in round two from the Houston Rockets. So uh, I don't know if there's going to be any major trades right now. I highly doubt it, but just in case, I'll see you guys in the draft. We're here in the draft. I was doing a little bit of scouting. I was considering maybe a couple trades and never really led to anything. So the unfortunate part about this draft class is there's a decent amount of solid point guards and there's a decent amount of solid small forwards. Pretty much two of the positions we actually don't need. Now, I know it's 2024. You can move around positions. doesn't really matter. Stefan Cassell goes number one overall to the Washington Wizards, meaning we can, if we want to, take Alexander Saar. Definitely comes some consideration for him maybe being the number one overall prospect. I think it's Riz Shea. I'm horrible with names. You all know this, but he is here. At six foot nine, you got Ron Holland, Cody Williams. So um, again, like the three small forwards sitting here, not really a huge need. The two point guards sitting here, also not very big. And then the center, I'm pretty comfortable with Mark Williams. So I mean, again, it's just not like anything significant is jumping out at me right now. Again, I could probably play one of these guys at the shooting guard or power forward spot, but it just sucks because, like, I mean, would I be dumb to take Jacoby Walter here? I, I feel like it's a little bit too high at number two overall. So I think Rizzo or Holland is probably my guy. I don't necessarily love the idea of having Saar here because I do think Mark Williams is going to be my center. So um, maybe just in some world I can play one of these guys at the stretch four. It's just kind of figuring out what's going to happen. So, you know, I'm going to take Zachary Rizache. Again, I'm probably completely butchering the pronunciation of that. My apologies, but uh, he's going to be my guy. And then Bobby Clinton, somebody I think I've drafted. Oh, DJ Wagner's here? How did he fall off? I feel like he was a higher prospect before, but you know what? I'll take him. Welcome to the team, DJ. Um, all right, so let's check it out. We are a 77 overall and a 71 overall. I'll sign Wagner. Why the hell not? Uh, Berton's only 5 mil. I could have sworn he was making in like the teens, like in terms of million dollars, but okay. Um, for that price tag, I'll bring him back. Probably going to be a trade piece for me. Uh, Amari Bailey at a 69 overall. Are his eyes going the same way? Okay. Uh, I'm just not going to bring him back. I don't think so. Well, I did see Marquise Bolden here, who I do kind of like, but no, not going to do it. Um, this free agency class is not great by any means. If we look at our free agency, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, we have Miles Bridges who is going to be kind of one of the bigger decisions we make right now. Do we want to, you know, go out and spend a decent amount of money on him? I'm not really sure if that's something we want to do right now, but uh, we need upgrades. I have to figure out what to do with these two because I have to find a way to get them both in the starting lineup. I'm just going to see what happens to the overalls. Brandon Miller goes down one if you move him to small forward. He goes down three if you move him to power forward. And then Riz Shea goes down two at power forward, two at shooting guard. So you know what? Well, Brandon Miller, six foot seven. We're going to play him at the shooting guard spot moving forward. We have a very tall backcourt. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, with him and LaMelo, but I really do think making sure getting both these guys in the starting lineup is kind of our best plan right now. So uh, one through three, we are all set. We're good at the center spot as well. So four out of five of our starters are completely filled out. Now it just kind of kind of determine how much money does Miles Bridges want. It's not a lot. <sighs> Again, I don't think Miles Bridges is necessarily a great human being, but I would be stupid not to just resign him for this price tag. It, it doesn't really feel like this is Davis Berton's money, right? What are we talking about here? Uh, I'm going to bring him back. Everybody else is pretty much free to leave. I might make a couple trades because I do think we have some quality young depth on this team that is good, but although we don't really need everybody here. So uh, it's time to kind of clear this out a little bit, see if we can find a direction with this team. These next three or four trades might end up being pretty boring, and if they are, I apologize, but I kind of figured out a way to already have depth on this team, so everybody we're going to trade is literally just going to be for draft picks, so our first trade here with the Philadelphia 76ers, thank you very much. I'll show you the 10-man rotation. It's going to be Ball, Nick Smith Jr., it's going to be Miller, it's going to be excuse me, Trey Mann, Curry's going to go. Uh, I moved Martin to be the backup small forward behind Zach here, and uh, that's what we're going to do, so Bertans, McGowan's probably on their way out, same thing with JT Thor, and then Nick Richards, Mark Williams. 
pretty much set. So let's just move on from all these guys. Again, if 2K wants to be dumb and give me draft picks for players who don't nearly deserve the return that they are getting, I am certainly going to take advantage of stupidity. That's what makes this a great country, taking advantage of stupidity. That sounds a little suspicious. All right, man, we're going to make a first round pick trade there with the Utah Jazz. We are going to do a couple more trades. One with Bryce McGowan's here. Probably, again, a little bit of potential there. Actually, you know what? I can hang on to him. He's not expiring. We'll hang on to Bryce. JT Thor is expiring. Probably as funny as it might sound. Not going to play over Grant Williams. So we'll move on from him as well. I don't want to take another first from the Jazz. We kind of just robbed them blind. All right. I think we're all set. I will see you guys at the start of the first season here in Charlotte. The rotation is finalized. Before we go ahead and talk about it, I want to read you guys off real quick what's going to happen with our first round pick this year. Charlotte's first round pick to San Antonio, protected selections 1 through 14 in 2024. Obviously, it was protected. We got the pick back, pick back 1 through 14 in 2025. So if our pick falls anywhere from number one overall to number 14 overall, I'm taking the draft pick back. Even though 2K says we're not supposed to, it's how it works. This game's dumb as shit when it comes to draft picks. I'm taking it back. Um, and if the pick hasn't conveyed to, for, excuse me, to San Antonio by 2025, then Charlotte will instead give up its 2026 second and 2027 second round pick. That's how most of these work. I don't know why 2K is of the idea that say, you know, we didn't give up our first round pick this year because it was protected. You automatically get it unprotected first next year. That's not how it works. Nine times out of 10, these things go on for a few years. If it doesn't convey any of the times, it turns into a couple second round picks. But no, 2K has this bigger belief. It's always just an unprotected first the year after. Dumb as hell. Here's how it's going to look. Lamella Ball, Brandon Miller, Zachary Rizache, Miles Bridges, and Mark Williams by one through five. Again, it's a youth movement here in Charlotte. We have a nice young head coach in Jacob Underwood, a very young one through five. And although this team's probably not going to be very good, we're moving in the right direction. We have some sort of identity now, which is always what this team's been looking for. Bench unit is actually pretty solid. Trey Mann's going to be my sixth man off the bench. Cody Martin, we moved to that small forward bat spot. He'll be my backup small forward. Nick Richards, my backup big. You got Grant Williams in here. Nick Smith Jr. rounding out this 10-man rotation. So, um, again, I know we're not going to be good. It's not my goal to be good this year. It's my goal to have solid numbers all across the board for all of our guys. Have another high draft pick, and then we'll go from there. But, yeah, not going to be a good first season. It is a building season 100% and a building season i will see you at the end of the first season here in charlotte has finally come to an end and i'm not gonna lie to you it was a lot better than i thought we were going to be we wrapped up the first season with a record of 40 and 42 just below 500 and although i am a firm believer that the middle of nowhere like 500 record exactly it's one of the worst places to be for a team like this that's, you know, young, up and coming. That is not a bad thing at all. So very, very good first season for us here in Charlotte. I don't know if we're in the playoffs, but we'll find out. Nicole Jokic is your MVP. Stefan Caselli went number one overall out of UConn. To the Wizards, and he wins Rookie of the Year. CP3 still kicking, I guess, in Golden State. Wemby's your deep poi. Men Thompson, most improved. Donovan Mitchell, Clutch Player of the Year. Mark Dagnall, head coach of the Oklahoma City Thunder, your coach of the year. So, I mean, are we fighting for a playing spot? We are. We are going to be taking on the Toronto Raptors, and then that team will face the loser of the Hawks and the Magic. And if we win two straight... We're in the playoffs, my friend. We truly will be. So uh, here's a look at the East. Here is a look at the Western Conference. Let's dive into some stats real quick, see how everything kind of shook up for us. The Mellow Ball was fantastic, as he always is when healthy. I mean, about 26 points, five boards, eight assists. That's actually a beautiful season. That's probably all NBA. Uh, Miles Bridges was our second leading scorer. Brandon Miller, I would kind of hope, would have taken an even another step. He actually kind of went down in the scoring department. I don't know if maybe just shooting guard isn't a great fit, but I still kind of expect a little, a little more. Uh, Rizzi, not a horrible first season or overall. Mark Williams was a double-double. He'd love to see it. Uh, Trey Mann was our sixth double-digit score, so that's great. Smith Jr., Martin Richards, and then Grant Williams. Rebounds per game is going to be Mark Williams and assists Lamella Ball. All right, we are going to be fighting here for a playing spot. It's first round matchup or round game uh, with the Toronto Raptors, who somehow have the beard. James Harden has taken his talents to the six. I was not necessarily expecting that, but he is here. Let's just see what happens. We win. We win the first game, meaning we are now going to be taking on the Orlando Magic to see who will be the eight seed here in the Eastern Conference. It is Cole Anthony, Devin Carter, Franz Wagner, Paolo Bencaro, Ronald Carter Jr. They have Jalen Suggs coming off the bench. Why? I have no idea, but he is. And uh, let's see what happens right now. And we end up losing. So, meaning we're in the lottery, so we will have our draft pick back, which of course is nice. Probably would have just lost in round one anyways. It is a Hawks and a Nuggets finals. You got Trey Young versus Nikola Jokic. Hawks get it done. Trey Young, goddamn, dude is just balling out. He's your finals MVP. Um, all right, we're over. LeBron was a pacer. 
what? I don't know. Um, but we always override his retirement. Same thing with Popovich. And uh, at this point in time, we're going to make sure we get our draft pick back because it will be in the lottery. Uh, it is probably projected either 13 or 14. It is 13. It is protected 1 through 14. So we are going to take it back. It jumped up to 3. Oh, my God. That's insane. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, so I'm going to make sure we get our pick back. We're obviously very happy with the job Jacob Underwood did in his first season for us. And uh, I'm going to take my draft pick back, and we'll go from there. I've decided I'm going to go ahead and draft a player. I don't necessarily want to, but all of the players I was looking to trade for are unfortunately not really available. So we're going to go ahead and see what we can do in the draft. Uh, I'm assuming, yes, Cooper Flag goes number one overall. So, I mean, the Spurs kind of got screwed because, like, the 13th overall pick jumped all the way up to number three. But that's the way protections work. But they sold the first overall pick. They get to pair Cooper Flag up with Victor Wembanyama for an insane front court. And then the Rockets, who somehow were number two. I thought they'd be a little bit lower. Uh, Jaleel Bethia. Bethia? Bethia? I don't know. All right. So, Dylan Harper's sitting here. Uh, Ace Bailey's sitting here. VJ Edgecomb's sitting here. I mean, there are a lot of options. I'm not going to lie to you. Probably whoever I draft's not going to play. So... Dylan Harper, welcome to the team. Uh, do we have any other picks? We do. We have 28, 14, 26. I'll actually draft somebody at 28. Um, probably going to be similar to what we do with whoever we or who we just took number three overall um, and just not play for. Ooh, Jeremy Kane's sitting here out of Duke. I'll take Jeremy Kane. He's probably not going to play for us, but again, we'll just draft him. Why the hell not? Um, all right, so 79 overall, 72 overall. Um, I was looking at a lot of names and a lot of options for who I wanted to draft. I'm not going to lie to you. I was trying to find a way to... Trade for Zion Williamson, and uh, it just wasn't happening. So, you know, I kind of kind of gave up on that one. But I do think there are still definitely some options here. Of course, we just had to get through the team player options, period, for us. So, like, how about a guy like Paolo Bancaro? I feel like he'd be, like, a really, really fun option for us. Again, it's tricky to make the money work sometime. But uh, I'd probably be willing to do it. Oh, he's untouchable. Okay. It's never going to happen if they're untouchable. I know people tell me all the time, hey, just turn off untouchables. If it was that easy, I would. Um, I mean, I could, but it's just, it's not really, like, there are untouchable players in basketball, whether you want to believe it or not. So, um, what I think our best bet is probably just to wait till after free agency. We could go try to sign, like, one of the superstars, like a Tatum or a Mitchell or, oh, Brunson's here. But I just, I don't really think that makes a lot of sense for us right now, clearing up our entire cap sheet just for one name. So, uh, we're going to bring in Trey, or bring back Trey Mann, um, and then I'm going to wait for some of the bigger names to get signed, and hopefully they have been. Mobley's still here. He's an option. He's not really there offensively. He's a tremendous defensive player. But um, I was really kind of leaning towards maybe a guy like Scotty Barnes could be a name for us here. I don't necessarily hate that idea. I mean, I'm just I'm just curious. Like, what would it take to get somebody like Scotty Barnes? So Bridges is in this deal. I think. Ooh, where do I keep Harper? No, I mean I have all of these young players. Like, do I want to keep Dylan Harper? Play him at the two. Move Miller back to the th to the three. I could do that. What's the value on both these guys? I'm just curious. Where's the shade? They're the same exact value. Yeah, I mean, I don't necessarily know who which one's like a better option to keep. Like, it was a solid enough rookie season from Zachary here that I don't necessarily. I'm not sitting here saying I should trade him, but like, also part of me thinks if I move Miller back to the three, it might be a little bit more beneficial. So you know what? I might hang on to Zachary. Or I might hang on to Dylan Harper here. I might. Let's see what else we would have to throw in a deal like this. Uh, Grant Williams, take a hike, pal. Um, and then I would give up my first next year. It is currently valued at two stars. It's not going to be a two-star first-round pick. We're going to be much better. Wow, that's it? Okay. Um, I didn't necessarily want to make a trade like that big, but again, I really do think moving Brandon Miller back to the small forward spots is going to benefit him a little bit more. Of course, you know, another year of development play next to better players will also do that. But um, I just think Dylan Harper has a lot of potential. He's the same overall as Rizache was. And then more of a natural fit, maybe. I don't know. Um, so we're good there with our one-two punch. I do want to figure out, because I have a lot of like young guards here with Smith Jr., Wagner. We just went ahead and drafted McCain. Just re-signed uh, Trey Mann. So, I mean, there's some options. I think our best bet would be, first and foremost, finding a backup power forward, because we did just trade Grant Williams. Um, I could actually probably just trade a bunch of the names I have on the bench. Like, if I were to trade DJ Wagner and Bryce McGowns in the first from Dallas in 2020. Like, just curious. Who are the options here? Uh, not a lot of power forwards. That's for damn sure. Tamani Kamara. Those numbers don't really excite me too much. But like, let's be honest with each other. The no matter what, these guys are both entering free agency. So 
We'll just do this deal. Again, it's not a great trade, but it is what it is. All right, I will see you guys at the start of year number two. After what was a really successful first season from what we were expecting this offseason, we went ahead and reloaded at another really, really good, talented player in Scotty Barnes. Went ahead and drafted Dylan Harper, and this team is just really on the up and up right now. I fully expect us to be in the mix here in the Eastern Conference and maybe even a true contender. We'll find out. LaMelo Ball, Dylan Harper, Brandon Miller, Scotty Barnes, Mark Williams is your one through five again. We had to make a big decision between Dylan Harper and Zachary Rizache. We went with Harper. I'm really hoping that turns out to be the right decision. Uh, ben June is pretty good. Trey Mann, our sixth man here. We brought him back. Still got Nick Richards, Cody Martin, Tumani Kamara, Nick Smith Jr. So I am excited. I think this is going to be a very, very good second season. And a second season I will see you at the end of. Luka Doncic wins his first career MVP. More importantly, we win 53 games throughout the course of our second regular season here in Charlotte. I will definitely take it. We're clearly a playoff team now. We are fighting in an Eastern Conference that, uh, you know, has some good teams. Not as good as the West, but definitely still up in the air. We'll find out. Uh, yeah, 31, 32 point triple double for Luka is nuts. 45% from three. God damn. Cooper Flag and Victor Wembanyama in the same front court is absolutely terrifying for the rest of basketball. James Wiseman's your sixth man of the year. He is now a Cleveland Cavalier. Wemby is your deep boy. James Wiseman also wins most improved year. And Fox, second career clutch player of the year. Carlisle, head coach of the Indiana Pacers, coach of the year. Um, where are we? We are the, wow, look at the Pistons up here. Two of the worst teams in the league fighting it out. Uh, we are the three seed. We were actually tied with the Pistons. They had the tiebreaker on us, though, and now we're the three seed. So we are going to be taking on the Celtics in round one. Oh, good. What a consolation prize for us. Here is a look at the numbers on the year in terms of points per game. It was ball. Barnes, Miller, a good, good again to see that number back up in terms of scoring. Um, I don't know if it was him playing the shooting guard spot or what it was, but he's doing better at small forward. Dylan Harper, solid rookie campaign. That's better than what Rizache did in his rookie season. Again, I know he has better players around him, but Harper, let's just admit it, might just be a better player. I don't know. Williams, Mann, Smith, Richards, Martin, and Kamara. That trade for Kamara is not looking that great. William led us in boards and assists was LaMelo Ball. So as I mentioned, our consolation prize for being one of the best teams in the East is the goddamn Boston Celtics in round one. Now, I'm not excited for this first round. They are a better team. I'm not going to lie to you. The really surprising thing is how on earth are they a six seed? We're up 3-1 right now. Hold on. Hold the damn phone for a minute. I'll take it. I don't want to call it an upset because we're a higher seed and we were the better team. But, like, I don't know. I'd much rather face the Pistons in round two. Actually, maybe not. They're pretty good. All right. Not bad. I will say I actually fuck with this team a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. All right. We do take game one from Detroit. They win the second one. We win three. We win four. We're in the Eastern Conference Finals. We're in the Eastern Conference Finals taking on the Indiana Pacers. you got Tyrese Halliburton. There's a joke in here somewhere that Tyrese Halliburton was born on leap year and he's like five years old and obviously this guy's next to him, but I'm not going to make it. I'm a better person than that. Benedict Mather and Jairus Walker. Shingun is a scary pickup for them now. Don't get me wrong. I love Miles Turner, but another year of development for Shingun really takes this team to another level. So very, very big challenge here in the Eastern Conference. We just dog walked the Pacers and are you kidding me? Nice game sometimes, man. Uh, we are taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder here in the NBA Finals. They are, of course, a very good, very young team. Herb Jones is such a fantastic addition. I'm, I'm such a big Herb Jones fan. I really am. Uh, this is an insane defensive backcourt, by the way. That's going to give LaMelo Ball some problems. Uh, Corey Kispert's a good shooter out of this team. we got Jalen Williams, Chet Holmgren, Lou Dort off the bench, Case and Wallace. I mean, this team is about 85,000 draft picks. They're uh, definitely going to have a lot of young talent. But we are up 2-1 right now. They tie it up 2-2. We go up 3-2. We are heading to Oklahoma City here for what could be a closeout game for us on the road, and uh, we got to fight back or we're just going to get our shit pumped, are we? God damn it. I don't like Game 7s. They stress me out in 2K. They stress me out in real life, and it's uh, at least on our home floor, but come on, fight. Don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Oh, my God. Well, that, um, well, hang on a damn minute. I'll see you guys in there. We are certainly fighting right now. We have taken a six-point lead with two minutes to go. And now, although I am happy, I'm feeling good, as I'm sure many of you are aware, I'm not very good at this game. And for some reason, you sickos love watching me actually play it. So here's the whole... That's some insane... De this is what I was talking about with the Herb Jones defense right there. That's a foul. Wow, we got bailed. Um, I'm not saying this one's over just because I know myself. I know my talents and playing in-game in 2K is not one of them. 
It's just not. So, um, never has been, never probably will be. But we are feeling good right now. Dylan Harper to the free throw line. First free throw is up and good, giving him 15, 6, and 6 on the night. Not bad for a game seven in the finals for a rookie. Brandon Miller, not sure why he was even out in this situation, but he's back in the game. Second free throw for Harper, up and good. All right, we've extended to an eight point lead. I have certainly blown leads similar, if not bigger, to this in less time. So, I need to lock it the fuck in right now. Herb Jones, let's see what he's got here. I'm not sure why SGA doesn't have the ball in his hands. Now he does, I guess. I shouldn't have asked for that. You got Ball versus SGA, two of the better young point guards in the league. SGA misses, and oh my God, we are feeling good. LaMelo Ball, a 30-point game seven here on our home floor in Charlotte. We're going to try to waste some time. We're going to call for the ISO, and then I'm going to call for a quick screen with about seven seconds left. We're going to see if we can blow by a really good defensive guard in Shea Gilgis alexander and let's just do this. Chet can't keep up. LaMelo to the rack. And that is a 10-point lead. We're feeling good. One more stop. And then I'll be really, really happy. So let's see. Can we do it here? Can we clamp up Shea Gildas Alexander, who in all honesty was probably an MVP candidate. And we did. They're not going to foul. A little bit of hand-holding going on there. But no, I want to dribble out much clock as possible. Get the fuck away from me, all of you. Oh, wait. I actually No, I actually have a mismatch right now. I kind of have to use it. LaMelo ball. Oh, I can't go. I blew the fucking layup. That was the quickest release of all time. The quickest shot meter I've actually ever seen. Just don't let Shea get a three off here. Shea Gildas Alexander, free throw jumper, got it. All right, back to eight. 49 and a half seconds. I don't know if they're going to play the foul game, but if they are, I want LaMelo Ball to have the basketball. Let's just blow by everybody. No foul. No. What is that? What is that? That should have been a foul. All right, Corey Kispert here. I'm not sure why you're trusting Corey Kispert with your season on the line in a game seven of a finals. SGA three. No, he missed. He missed. Get it out of Mark Williams' hands. I think we're pretty good. You have to foul. I I don't know what you're doing, but I guess I'll see you guys at the finals MVP. What a season. What a team. What a comeback. That is a championship in year two and a finals MVP for LaMelo Ball. You truly love to see it. A thrilling seven-game series with the Oklahoma City Thunder. We get it done, man. LeBron went to the Rockets. Imagine him and Dylan Brooks on the same team, but uh, obviously can't override the retirement again. So, wow, Pop actually didn't call it a career, but Thibs does. Interesting. Uh, Hall of Fame inductees, LeBron, Jersey retirements, LeBron, and Blake Griffin. Blake of the year, baby. All right, draft lottery. I know we're not going to have our draft pick. Um, yeah, I just I don't think we've traded for anything. Oh, good. What is that? The fifth fucking year in a row that the Spurs have number one overall? I mean, goddamn, I get it. Holy shit. All right, Underwood not going anywhere. We head up to the draft. Uh, I traded away my first, I believe, in the Scotty Barnes deal. We do have the 25th overall pick from the Houston Rockets. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't need it. Look at all the draft picks I have sitting here. I mean, whoever I draft, not going to play, so we're good. Uh, in terms of what I'm going to do with this team, there's not going to be many major changes, maybe a couple smaller changes on, like, the bench unit or something, but we're very happy very content with this team. Um, Mark Williams is a free agent. I want to get him back. I'd like to retain Nick Richards. I wouldn't mind upgrading the backup small forward spot with Martin. He is 30 or just hit 30. So um, I think there's an idea there that maybe there's a little bit of regression on the coming up. But we're just going to try to jump ahead of that a little bit. So um, I wouldn't mind making upgrades anyways. Let's see what we can do here with Martin and then maybe Kamara as well. Are there any like really good power forward options here? Not really. I like Brandon Clark a bit, but I just I don't know. I'm going to be a world-class asshole. Simone Fontecchio, Fontecchio, however the hell you pronounce it. Let's work on some deals here. So we're going to do Martin. We're going to do McCain and then a first and just see small forward, power forward, whatever it is. I like Vince Williams Jr. a lot. Also would get Isaiah Joe in that deal. I don't really know. But Patrick Williams, defensive-minded player coming off the bench. can play either the three or the four. I like that a lot. And then we're going to do Kamara, who I probably, again, gave up way too much for. And a first-round pick, lottery protected from the heat, small forward, power forward. I see Obi Toppin and Vince Williams Jr. in that deal. I just don't, I don't really need both of them. Donovan Klingon, the UConn product. Him and Zach Eady on the same team. It's the second time I've seen that. Um, all right. I know nobody really cares about this anymore, but let's just see small forward, power forward, making $10 million or less, and let's just see who the best player is that I could maybe realistically trade for. I don't know. Um, who's under contract? Jaime Jaquez Jr. might be not making enough money for a potential trade. Seriously? Okay. Well, that's out of the picture because Jaime makes way too much money. Um, who else is here? I see Grady Dick. Get a little dick in your life. Okay, that's not... Okay. Um, let's just find a way tomorrow. Take whatever draft picks you want. We're entering the final season. I really would like to scrub that from the record. 
whatever the hell I just said. I'll see you guys at the start of the final season. Last year, we had an absolutely insane playoff run. We went on to win it all in seven games versus the Oklahoma City Thunder. And this season, this team is only better. We've improved the bench. The starting five has a lot of development. And uh, I'm good. I'm happy. I'm feeling good. Lamella Ball, Dylan Harper, Brandon Miller, Scotty Barnes, Mark Williams, you're one through five, no changes there. Grady Dick going to be my new sixth man off the bench. You got Patrick Williams in here now. You got Nick Smith Jr., Trey Mann, who I feel bad if we went from sixth man all the way to ninth man, but again, we added more talent and Nick Smith developed, so it is what it is. Uh, Nick Richards rounding out the 10 man rotation, so um, I fully expect to be contending again. We could even be the favorites. Who the hell knows? See you guys at the end of year number three. It is MVP number two of this video for Nikola Jokic, but more importantly, we have by far our best regular season record yet at 68 and 14. We are feeling good. We are very much on the hopes and on the cusp of championship number two. AJ, rookie of the year. Demansta, Demansta. I've never been able to say the guy's last name, but rookie of the year in Orlando. Isaiah Collier, sixth man. Victor Wembanyama, Kevin Mc... Kevin McCollar. Oh, no. I'm thinking Kevin McAllister. That's home alone. Okay. Got confused for a second. Clutch player of the year, Nicole Jokic, Jacob Underwood. Coach of the year at 68 wins. Not very hard to figure that one out. We were, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, we were far and away the best team in the Eastern Conference. And wow, we were actually only five games ahead of the Utah Jazz. Added Evan Mobley. Interesting. A lot of size in that starting lineup. All right. Numbers. Let's check it out. Ball. Harper. Barnes, Miller, yeah, cool, okay. I mean, I don't really, at this point, you guys all know me. I don't really care who does what as long as we're winning basketball games. It is us and the Cavs. Not an easy first-round matchup. Kyrie went back to Cleveland. If Chris Middleton, what the hell is this team? I mean, a very, very good eight seed at that, but still a little bit of a surprise that that's what the Cavs are looking like. All right, that is a clean sweep. Moving on to the Pistons here in the Eastern Conference semifinals. I think we faced them last year in the Conference semifinals. They've added Shaden Sharp, so... I don't know how, but they did, and they've only gotten better. It's a very, very big, very challenging. Okay, maybe not. I don't know. Eastern Conference Finals, us and the Pacers once again. They are good, but again, I just think we're better. They might have the best player in the series if you want to call Tyrese Halliburton that, but, you know, I like LaMelo Ball. I do. Up 3-1. We win in five. We've lost only one playoff game so far. We are running back the finals from last year with the Thunder. I'm sure they have revenge on their minds, but I have Dynasty on mine. So let's go ahead and see if we can maybe take down the Thunder again. A quick 2-0 lead. They do win game three and four and five. We force game seven once again. We're going back to Charlotte here. I'm having some serious deja vu. Do not, do not be the ones who choke it this time. What a battle. Back and forth battle. We're good. We got this, right? We got it. We fucking got it, baby. Let's fucking go. LaMelo Ball, second straight finals MVP. Wow. I was going to hop in again, but I was like, you know what? These guys got it. This team's way too fucking good. They really are. What a rebuild. What a rebuild. Hot start to the week here on a Monday. And uh, wasn't necessarily expecting, you know, the team to come out looking like this, but it did. It worked. The team fit well together. And there, you look at the ages here. Like, our oldest player in the rotation is 26-year-old Trey Mann. That's absolutely insane. A future dynasty was coming here with this team. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, click a like down below. Of course, that would be awesome. Let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. I know this video has probably been long enough. That's it for me. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.